Good morning. This lesson is for my honors integrated one class and my integrated one class. But before I get started, I want to say I hope that everyone is doing all right out there. This is actually a review lesson, but it can also be used as a lesson to teach you how to write the equation of the line in slope intercept form. So let me go ahead and jump into the three goals or the three parts to the one goal that we have. And our goal is to write the equation of the line in slope intercept form, knowing one, the slope and the y intercept, two, two points on the same line. Um, I'm going to give two examples about this, one with a fraction, one without, and three, the slope and a point on the line. And again, I'm going to give two examples, one with a fraction, one without. <clears throat> Classically, this lesson is taught in the order of one, three, and two, but I find that if I switch the order and make this, make this the second type of problem instead of the third type of problem, I find I get more of you guys to understand it better, and it relates these two a little bit more, and so hopefully you, you see the connection a little bit better. Um, so before we get started with the examples, we need to review a couple things. Um, and we're going to review what the slope intercept form is, and it's y equals mx plus b, or it could be f of x equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So we're going to do, oh, email, we're going to do the first version of this knowing the slope and the y-intercept. So to write the equation knowing the slope and the y-intercept, or the m and the b, plug in those values, plug those values in, plug those values into, let me get my grammar right, Plug those values into y equals mx plus b, or f of x equals mx plus b. So I have um, a couple examples here. I'll do one, then you hit pause, try one on your own. Then I'll do another one. You hit pause and try that on your own, and hopefully you're getting it right. If not, hopefully you can figure out where your mistake was and understand what you did wrong and, and do better. All right, so we're going to write the equation of, write the equation in slope intercept form. The first example, my slope is 2 over 3, which is m, and my y-intercept is uh, negative 5. So my equation in slope-intercept form literally is y equals 2 over 3x, that's my m, plus a negative 5. Okay. So why don't you hit pause and you try this one. Hit pause. You don't learn if you don't try. Right? You don't learn if you don't try. So hit pause. Hopefully you hit pause and you're back. So... This would be your version, y equals 5x plus 2. All right. And then in this problem, you're given an m and a b. Remember, m's are slopes and b's are y-intercepts, and we literally plug them in. Okay. All right, example two, slope is 4, that's my b, and a y-intercept is 7. So my equation of the line is going to be y equals 4, x plus 7. y equals mx plus b. My m and my b. All right, now you try. Hit pause. Try to write it out, and we'll see if we agree. Hit pause. Try it. All right, hopefully you hit pause and tried it, because here's your answer. y equals negative 5 over 7x plus 12. All right. So I'm going to check off this, because we wrote the line in slope intercept form, form knowing a slope and a y-intercept. It's actually the easiest version of the three. Um, so let me go ahead and clean this all up, set up the second type of problem, and I'll be back. I'm back. So let's go ahead and talk about how to write the equation of the line in slope intercept form knowing two points on the line. We're going to do two examples. I'm doing the first example right now. And in this example, there's no fraction, which means the next example that we're going to do has a fraction. So let me go uh, review a couple things with you real quick. Um, in my class, I taught you how to plug the values into a table. That's the first thing we do. And then we find the change in x and y. So how does this value turn into that? And how does that value turn into that? And then we're going to plug the values from the formula, plug the values into the formula and simplify. And this puts the equation in the slope intercept form. This is a formula that we created um, at the beginning of the year uh, as a result of our uh, sequence pattern from the table. And so it's, you know, I want to relate uh, for my students all of the work we did, and, and hopefully this seems very familiar to you guys. Um, and our formula is we plug in the first y value, 
plus the change in y divided by the change in x times the parentheses of x plus the opposite of the first x value. Okay, so um, I have an example that I'm going to work out doing this. Then you should hit pause, work out this example, see we're in the same place, and hopefully we are. And then I'll come back and do the example when we have a fraction for slope. And hopefully you see how easy that problem is, and then we move on to our third and final excuse me, type of problem. All right, so I'm just going to follow my directions. First plug ordered pairs into this. It does not matter what order you plug them in. I'm just going to plug them in the order I was given. Minus 3, then 5, and then minus 1 and minus 1. Okay. I need to know how minus 3 turns into minus 1. So if I owe $3 before, now I owe a dollar. That means that I've gained $2. So that's a positive thing. So going from 5 to negative 1, that means that I've lost $6. So this is a minus 6. Okay. So now I can plug into this formula. All right. So my first y value, let's see here. So it's f of x equals my first y value, which is 5 plus my change in y divided by my change in x. So my change in y is minus 6. My change in x is 2. Parentheses, x plus the opposite of my first x value. My first x value is minus 3. The opposite is plus 3. Let's simplify this slope. So now I have f of x equals 5. This becomes negative 3, x plus 3. All right, let's go ahead and distribute. Okay. And I'm going to get 5 minus 3x minus 3 times plus 3 is minus 9. Okay. And I can combine these two, and I get minus 3x minus 4. If I have 5 and I owe 4, or if I have 5, I owe 9, that means I owe 4. So this is my equation in slope-intercept form that goes through two points. All right, so why don't you hit pause. Due to this problem, what I did to that problem, and let's see if we are in agreement. So hit pause. If you don't try, you don't learn. So hopefully you hit pause and you try it, and I'm going to now work it out for you. All right, so I'm going to make my table. And... You're my first, okay, so minus 3 and 4, and minus 2 and minus 4. Okay, minus 3 turns into minus 2 by adding 1, so I gained a dollar. I went from owing 3 to owing 2. I had 4, now I owe 4, that means that I lost 8. Whew, that was a good day. Okay, so now I can plug into my formula, right? So f of x equals my first y value plus my change in y divided by my change in x. My change in y divided by my change in x so it's negative 8 divided by negative, a positive 1 times parentheses x plus the opposite of the first x value. So minus 3 now becomes plus 3. All right. And let's see here. Let's simplify this slope. Remember, this example has no fractions. Our slope simplifies. The next example, the slope does not simplify. All right, so here we go. We get uh, blah, 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 blah. We go f of x equals 4. Um, minus 8 divided by 1 is minus 8. Parentheses, x plus 3. Uh, let's distribute the 8. So now I get 4 minus 8x minus 24. Let's put the 4 and the minus 24 together. If I have 4 and I owe 24, that means that I owe 20. And it's minus 8x, so f of x equals this. Okay, so this was an example when I didn't have fractions for my slope. The next example will have fractions for slope, and I'll show you how we deal with that. So let me clean this up, and I'll be back. I'm back. This is just really quick. Um, I, I hope that you write this down, because I need to erase this to help us out for the fraction Problem. So make sure you have this written down, and then uh, that'll help out, help you walk through the next type of example. Actually, I'll help you walk, walk through all the examples for the remaining part of this lesson. So 
I'll be back again. I'm back, so let's go ahead and talk about the second example of writing the equation of the line in slope intercept form when we have to deal with the fraction. This is our fraction example. So I eliminated what we had here before, or I erased what we had here before, so that I could talk about a few things that we need to know in order to accomplish this goal. Um, the first thing is about eliminating fractions. Really easy to do. Multiply everybody by the denominator. And when we do this, I'm trying to walk and chew gum. When we do this, uh, it either multiplies or cancels. It can't do both, right? So I'm going to multiply everybody in this problem by 3, and I'm multiplying by 3 because that is my denominator. All right, so it's either going to multiply or it's going to cancel. So here it multiplies, here it cancels, so I'm left with a 5, and here it multiplies. So I eliminated the, the fraction by multiplying everyone by the denominator. Second thing I need to review with you. If you have a number times parentheses with something being added or subtracted, that's considered one number. And that goes back to our first rule, which you'll see here shortly. And I have an example to, to emphasize this. 12 is the same as 4 times 3. That's still 12. And 3 is the same as 2 plus 1. This has a value of 12. So when we're going to eliminate the fraction, this gets multiplied. Something that looks like this gets multiplied one time. Okay. And the last thing I want to re review with you is if you have a negative in front of a fraction, that negative can go with the numerator or it can go with the denominator. You're going to want to move it to the numerator. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. And I'm going to use the steps from the previous section to accomplish this goal, but I'm going to add this step, and you're going to have to add that step, okay, when you try. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to make my table. Three and seven is my first order pair. My second order pair is six and 11. 3 turns into 6 by adding 3. That's my change in x. 7 turns into 11 by adding 4. Now I can plug into my formula, and I get f of x equals my first y value, which is 7, plus my change in y divided by my change in x, so it's 4 over 3. Parentheses, x plus the opposite of the first x value. My first x value is 3, so I'm going to make that minus 3. Now, I have a fraction, and I'm going to eliminate the fraction by multiplying everyone by the denominator. I have one, two, three numbers. Remember, this counts as one number, so everybody gets multiplied by the denominator. So this, is, this gets a denominator, you get a denominator, and you get a denominator. Remember, it either multiplies or it cancels. Can't do both. So now I'm left with three f of x's equals to 3 times 7 gets me 21. These cancel, and it's plus 4, parentheses, x minus 3. Now I can distribute. And we're going to get 21 plus 4x minus 12. I can put 21 and minus 12 together and get 9. So now I have 3f of x's equals to 4x plus 9. Let's undo the multiplying everyone by 3 by dividing everybody by 3. And let's write our result right here. So f of x, because those cancel, is equal to 4 over 3. x, that doesn't cancel or reduce. Plus 3 goes into 9 three times. All right? So this is how I write the equation in slope-intercept form when I have a fraction for my slope. I eliminate it, put it off to the side. Once I put it together, everybody, I bring it back. Okay. So why don't you try what I just did with this, and remember, you're going to need to make your fraction look like this. All right, so why don't you hit pause, try it on your own. Hopefully you hit pause and try it on your own. It's not too late to hit pause and try it on your own. I hope you hit pause and try it on your own, because here we go. 
All right, I'm back, or you're back. All right, so we're gonna make our table so that's minus two and three, and it's minus four and eight. Minus two turns into minus four by losing two, right? You, you, you went from owing two to owing four, so you lost two. Three turns into eight by gaining five. Now we have enough information to write the equation of the line, or plug into the formula for the equation of the line. So I get f of x equals, uh, my first y value is 3, plus my change in y is 5, my change in x is minus 2, my, uh, let's see, parentheses, x plus the opposite of my first x value, that's going to be plus 2 because the first x value is minus 2. Let me make sure I set this up correctly because last time I made a mistake and I'm not going to refilm it because... I didn't pay attention. I tried to walk and chew gum. First y value, change in y, change in x, opposite the first x. Okay, this is looking good. Let's go ahead and move that negative sign up like I said you should. There we go. And now we're going to multiply everybody by 2. This is one number, so it gets 1, 2. This gets a 2, and this gets a 2. So it either multiplies or cancels. Let me try not to fall over. And I get... 2f of x's equals to 2 times 3. That gets me to 6. You cancel, and now I'm left with minus 5, parentheses, x plus 2. I'm going to now distribute my 5, and I now have 6 minus 5x minus 10. I can put these guys together, and I get minus 5x minus 4. You have 6, you owe 10. It means you still owe 4. So 2f of x's equals minus 5x minus 4. Let's undo the multiplying by 2 by dividing by 2. Remember, uh, we got to get rid of what we did, undo what we did. And our equation of the line, that's a funny looking f, let me fix that. f of x, because those cancel, equals minus 5 over 2 x, and 2 goes into minus 4 minus 2 times. <laughs> Out of breath. All right. I'm checking that guy out. This is a longer lesson than I expected, but I think it's a really good lesson for what we're going into, and that's section 19.5, and it's writing equations of lines. And so if we don't remember how to write equations of lines, 19.5 is really tough. Let me go ahead and clean all this off, set up the last goal, and I'll be back. I'm back. So we are on to the third type of problem, and that's writing the equation of the line in slope-intercept form when you know the slope and the point on the line. Two examples. First example, no fraction. Um, I want to I wanna relate this problem as much as I can to the previous type of problem, because if we make problems the same, then we don't have to learn about how to do different types of problems. And it simplifies this whole thing for us. So hopefully you see the connection between what I'm going to do here and what I'm going to do there. And that connection starts with this review. Remember, slope is rise over run, and rise over run is a change in y, because it's a vertical rise, right? Y is the vertical axis, and the run is a change in x. And the second thing I want to talk about is a number can become a number over one. That's the only background I needed. We're still going to make a table, plug into the formula, and simplify. All right? So I will do this example, and then you try that example, and hopefully... It makes sense to you. So I'm going to make it into a table. Okay. So I have a line passing through negative 2, negative 3. I'm going to put that into my table. Okay. So minus 2 and minus 3. Right. Now I have a slope. And the slope is a number over 1. And remember, this is my rise or my change in y. And this is my change in x. I don't care what that is. I don't need it. Now I have enough information to plug into my formula. All right, here we go. So f of x equals my first y value, which is minus 3, plus my change in y, which is 5, divided by 1, parentheses, x plus the opposite of my first x value. So that becomes plus 2. Well, 5 over 1, that becomes 1. I'm sorry, that becomes 5. It's been a long day. 
All right, we can distribute out that positive five. And we're gonna now get minus three plus five X plus 10. Minus three plus 10, that's plus seven. So five X plus seven, that's equal to my F of X. All right, so you do what I just did on this problem and hopefully you hit pause and try it on your own. You should hit pause and try it on your own. Your last chance to hit pause and try it on your own. And I hope that you hit pause and you try it on your own because I'm gonna go do this problem now. So what I wanted to do and what I wanted to show you was I could put this information I started with email, I could put this information I started with into the table and get back to what we did. Thus making these problems the exact same. And in fact, this problem, I don't have to figure out how my Y changes and how my X changes. I just need to know where the numbers go. All right, so I'm gonna make my table again. And you can probably do this problem without making the table, but I'm just gonna make it just to reinforce some concepts. There's my ordered pair, five and negative eight. Um, the slope is negative two, so that means that I have a change in Y of minus two and a change in X of plus one. Now I plug into my formula. F of X equals my first Y value, which is minus eight, plus my change in Y divided by my change in X, so that's plus minus two over one. X plus the opposite of my first X value with the top becomes minus five. And I wanna make sure I didn't go off the whiteboard because I'm tired of refilming these things. Oh, I'm on there, okay, good. I don't wanna have to refilm this again and again and again. I've done that too many times today. All right, so do it once, do it right. Well, I'm not doing it once, I'm doing it too many times. Minus two over one, that becomes minus two. So we get minus eight, minus two, parentheses x minus five. Let's distribute that minus two, and I get minus eight, minus two x, minus two times minus five, that becomes plus 10. I can put my minus eight and plus 10 together. If I owe eight and I have 10, that means I have two. So now I have minus two x, plus two, and that's equal to my f of x. So hopefully you got the same answer that I got. And we've got one more type of problem to do, and it's this type of problem knowing the slope and a, and a point that it passes through. However, our slope is a fractional number. This is gonna be a fraction. All right, so maybe you can already kind of figure out what we're gonna do, because it's really just a repeat all right, so let me clean this up and I'll be back. I'm back for the last time, I promise. All right, we're gonna talk about a third type of problem. We're given a slope and a point on the line and this is the second example that has a fraction. Let me sure right with a fraction. This has been a long lesson. I am tired, I'm sure you guys are tired of watching this, but this is the last type of problem that I can ask you to write the equation of a line. So we're gonna write the equation on the line in slope intercept form with a given slope passing through a given point. Again, remember that slope is rise over run or change in y over change in x. And if I have a negative out front, I can put it up top, which is what you're gonna to wanna to do. And let me work through an example, and then I'm gonna have you work through an example, and let's see how we do. And again, it's still the same steps. Put it in the table, plug it into the formula, get rid of the fraction, and simplify it, bring back the fraction, all right? So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a table. Uh, so six, five. Remember that slope is a change in Y over a change in X. So I know how five is gonna change. It's gonna change by adding three and six is gonna change by adding two, All right? Nope, I did that wrong. My change in Y is two and my change in X is three. Change in Y, change in X, all right. I don't want to film this any more times. So now I can plug into my formula. Here we go, so I get F of X is equal to my first Y value, which is five, plus my change in Y over my change in X, so that becomes two over three, parentheses, X, plus the opposite of my first X value, which becomes minus six. Let's eliminate that fraction. So remember, this is considered one number. So I'm gonna multiply this by three. I'm gonna multiply five by three, and I'm gonna multiply f of x by three. All right, so they either multiply or they cancel, but they can't do both. So I'm left with three f of x's. 
and that's equal to 15 plus the threes cancel, and that's plus two parentheses, x minus six. Let's go ahead and multiply out the two to the x and the minus six. We'll pass that out, distribute, and we are now left with 15 plus 2x minus 12. I can put those guys together, and I'm now left with 3f of x equal to 2x plus 3. Let me write this over here. Again, you don't have to repeat it if you're writing down everything. I just want to write it nice and high so we can all see it clearly. Let's go ahead and divide away the 3, undo the multiplying by 3. U cancel, so I have f of x equal to 2 over 3x, and 3 goes into 3 one time. And that is my equation of a line knowing a slope that's a fraction passing through a point. Okay. All righty. So, you know, you, there are other ways to do this problem, and, and, and I know that there's, a, you know, some of you are probably thinking I could have done this and it would have simplified it. Yes, you could have. Um, but where we're at writing equations of lines, I think it's just good just to have a method, and maybe you do see a way to do this a little bit shorter. And that's okay. Um, so here I have this problem. I'd like you guys to uh, hit pause and try it on your own. It would be a good idea to hit pause and try it on your own. Go ahead and hit pause, try it on your own. Hit pause, try it on your own. Hopefully it did, because if you did, here we go. So I'm going to plug it into the table. I'm going to get x and f of x. And my x value is 4. My y value is minus 10. I have a minus 3 over 2, so I'm going to make that into a... Uh, I have this, so I'm going to make it into that. So uh, my change in y is minus 3. My change in x is plus 2. And I'm going to now plug it into my equation. So I get f of x equal to my first y value, which is minus 10, plus my change in y divided by my change in x, parentheses, x plus the opposite of my first y, or my first x, which is plus 4, so that's minus 4. You know what, I'm just going to make sure I'm not off the screen. I'm so tired of having to re-record things. Ooh, I am flirting with it, aren't I? There we go, we're on there now. Okay, that's fixed. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, eliminate the fraction. So everybody gets multiplied by a 2. So now I have 2 f of x is equal to negative 20. That cancels minus 3 times parentheses x minus 4. Let's pass out that minus 3. And I get minus 20 minus 3x minus 3 times minus 4. That's minus 12. No, it's plus 12. I gotta learn how to multiply. I can put my minus 20 and my plus 12 together. And I get 2f of x equals minus 3x minus 8. Let's divide away the 2, undo our multi multiplication. U cancel, and I'm left with f of x equals minus 3 over 2x minus 4, because 2 goes into minus 8, minus 4 times. And there's the equation of my line with a fractional slope passing through a point. Now, this method makes it a lot easier when our y-intercept is going to be a fraction. <sighs> so, hopefully this helps you guys write equations and lines and it makes some sense. And we see that you can treat a couple problems the same way. So you don't have to learn different methods for each problem. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end this right here. I hope everybody is doing all right out there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.